entered us into the vortex. By now, it's no secret, to most people anyway, I believe the majority of North Americans and people worldwide believe in the existence of UFOs and aliens, but do you believe they could possibly be working with the government and for the government, or is the government working for them? Take a look at this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Oh, good morning, everyone. During Barack Obama's speech at 2012 APAC Policy Conference at the Washington Convention Center, the camera spotted a very odd individual, who may be either with the U.S. Secret Service, or with the Israels, and could be a strong evidence of a shapeshifter alien humanoid working for the powers that be, caught in a high-definition video during an event of the Zionist cabal. Four years ago, I stood before you and said that Israel's security is sacrosanct. It is non-negotiable. That belief has guided my actions as president. Even though at first sight he looks just like the average Secret Service spook, a series of odd features on his head, face, plus a very strange behavior and creepy movements, suggest something else. But due the low lighting in half the amphitheater, he would pass unnoticed or regarded as a normal human being by the crowd, and everybody who watched this video, if it was not by the camera of the Jewish News 1, which caught him from another angle apparently shape-shifting into some sort of reptilian non-human form. Disregard all the distortions and image artifacts caused by post-edition zooming, and pay close attention to how his head features suddenly change. His ears, his nose, his chin, cheekbone, jaw and mouth, are no longer looking human at all. Matter of fact now he has a blatant non-human face, so what just happened? Did his shape-shifting device fail during Obama's speech, in the middle of an amphitheater crowded with people? Is he an actual reptilian humanoid? Is he one of the Anunnaki? Is he a tall grey bio-android, or what? Is that video evidence, that the Illuminati elite is in bed with at least one ancient extraterrestrial race? hidden in plain sight, and pulling the strings of mankind. Now, I don't claim to be an expert on any subject, especially CGI, but I've seen a lot of videos over the last few years, a lot of UFO videos, a lot of alien videos, everything ranging from blatantly fake to damn, that's a really good fake, to holy shit, that one's real. And that video doesn't look like CGI at all. If, if you can prove it to me, please analyze the video and send me the results. I'd love to know because that looked real to me. Now, I've done videos in the past showing proof we haven't been in space and having guys from NASA say, no, we can't leave low Earth orbit. People still want to click. They don't want to look at the videos. People comment on the stuff. They'll read the title. Just read the title and start commenting as if they've watched the video and can talk intelligently on the subject matter. It's just insane. Watch the whole video before you comment, guys. Do a, you know, definitely watch some of it, because I'll nail you for it in the comments. Here's a video that shows that humans couldn't possibly exist 
in a vacuum, even in those spacesuits. Prove this wrong. The enormous vacuum chamber makes a high vacuum, which is three levels before the supposed much higher vacuum of outer space, as we can see here. Considering that the, the suits these guys here are wearing reminded me of one thing, bubble wrap. Now let's see what happens to bubble wrap if we put it in a table vacuum pump. Oh my god, look at it! And for anybody who has any doubts how powerful a vacuum can be and what it can do to a puny tin can of a spaceship, a wimpy space suit or a small leak even in outer space. The ridiculous space suits which the Hollywood and NASA Freemasons like for us to accept as real would suffer the same fate in the vacuum of space as bubble wrap in a tabletop vacuum chamber being popped and depleted of oxygen instantly. And seeing as the human body mainly consists of water, the following clip will demonstrate what would happen to these astronauts. You can see a little bit of bubbles start going and whoa start boiling. How cool is that? But the ultimate and most dangerous test was a huge specially constructed vacuum chamber. They were able to pull all the, the air out to create a big vacuum. That way we could test our suits to make sure there was no leakage. One such test narrowly avoided disaster. Jim LeBlanc was the test subject in the vacuum chamber. This is one of the rare instances where they tried to use a spacesuit in a vacuum chamber but quickly realized that it's impossible in a high vacuum so they immediately started using swimming pools to train and remained silent on the absence of vacuum chamber training by astronauts, which basically is a lie by omission. As I stumbled backwards, I could feel the saliva on my tongue starting to bubble just before I went unconscious. And that's kind of the last thing I remember. Essentially, he had no pressure on the outside of his body and. That's a very unusual case to get, and there's very little in the medical literature as to what happens when you have that. There's a lot of conjecture, you know, that your fluids will boil, you know, that your fluids will boil. You can see a little bit of bubbles start going. I could feel the saliva on my tongue starting to bubble. They weren't able to construct proper space suits, and they didn't want their spacemen to get boiled, so they went to the swimming pool. Here's where they simulate fixing a space shuttle, fixing the ISS, or working with other modules. It is, it's the same as far as every rail, as far as every bolt, as far as where every rail should be in place. They have to go turn a bolt 98 times in space. And which ISS module is in the pool right now? Pretty much the everything that we have in the pool, except for the Russian segment. We they went from a no-pressure environment to a pressure environment, which makes no sense and simulates zero gravity only and exclusively for the camera. He had no pressure on the outside of his body. And... Ah, I'm astonished by how difficult it is to actually move around. The idea, like from the movie Gravity, that you could like reach out and grab something with one of these gloves? No way. Not, not good. Now here is a clip from my all-time favorite wrestler in my all-time favorite movie and when I saw this film it made me really start to think that it is possible at the very least theoretically that there are aliens on this planet and they have taken us over. It's not like we're all geniuses and they've 
you know, giving us all these vaccinations and uh, fluoride and everything that, that makes us dumb. Makes us uh, apathetic, that's the word. And we tend to focus on ourselves rather than everything else that's going on around us. So take a look at this one and let me know what you think. Factor Theory Live, I'm Steve Crawford. All day, and actually since last night, I believe, I've been getting messages on my Facebook page, Factor Theory Live Facebook page, and from this guy named Vince from Australia, saying he has pictures of aliens, extra dimensional beings, uh, a secret base, which kind of got my attention because I believe there's a cloaked base there that used to be on an island that has now been taken off the maps. If you remember, I did a video before talking about the movie Dazed and Confused and how there is a scene where they're in a classroom and they got a globe in front of them and it shows an island just off the west coast. <laughs> I can't remember. I keep my left and right messed up just off the west coast of Australia and it's not there anymore nobody can remember it and I've gotten other people from Australia sending me messages saying yeah I, I don't remember this island and I, I can't see it and, which could also lead into MK Ultra, but that that's a whole nother thing now this guy says he's got all this proof I looked at one of his videos he doesn't have an editing machine so he can't have an arrow pointing and you, he, there's nothing of him talking and telling you what it is you're looking at you're looking at an infrared video which is supposed to be this base he says he's got evidence that he can't get out to anybody and it's bigger than God uh, right I'm gonna put up a video now that uh, funny as shit we're gonna go with the UFO theme I'll be back back to theory live my name's Greg Baker, and I really did see a motherfucking UFO, man. I might come down here to Walmart about, what time is it? My phone's dead. Uh, about 3 o'clock in the morning, I was craving boiled eggs. I just got done smoking fucking two joints, two joints. And I come down here, and I see it up in the woods, and I was like, what is that? Oh, it's like, I knew who that was. That's probably a fucking old Jimbo down the street spotlighting deer. Hope the sheriff don't find him. Then I remembered I had my mag light in my truck. I bought out a full drive magazine. I shined it up there. You'll never guess what I saw, man. It was a freak ass fucking creature looking at me all with bug eyed, man. I thought it was a fucking big ass frog. You know, I thought it went there to Cumberland and drank that chemical water. Drop the fucking cigarette. Get drank that chemical water and blowed up off steroids or something. Some bitch start running down the hill. That mag light don't lie. It's like fucking 500 volts inside of it. What? This mag light, okay? One time. <laughs> this mag light is so powerful. One time, mag light don't lie, because I. That some bitch got like 500 volts in it. Look, one time my brother's fucking Isuzu rodeo broke down down there by coming there. We jump started that motherfucker with that mag light, dude. And down the hill, I, <laughs> I thought it was a part of ISIS. So I have this mag light in my hand. This little creature comes running down the thing. I thought it was a, a, a frog, like I told you before. He touched his mag light and the fucking bulb busted. He you knows from he you knows from space now. And look, y'all, if y'all don't believe me, I got evidence. Okay, I was running away from him, and he dropped one of his testicles. I'm gonna show it to you. Look. This ain't your everyday ordinary kid ball, okay? This is a fucking Tesco with a bunch of nipples all over it. I'm fucking kidding with you or something? Look at this fucking thing. Lucky he didn't make hand-to-hand -hand combat with me because I've seen Roadhouse like 45 times. I will karate chop you in the fucking dick. Oh. And you know, aliens, they say come in all shapes and sizes. They said George Bush is an alien, but I kind of believe it. I've seen that shit on Discovery Channel. You know, they, I feel like I've been having somebody follow me the past five years, probably because my IQ, because, you know, the aliens tend to follow, like, real smart people. And if you got a real smart brain inside of you, they'll come steal it from you. When I was in kindergarten, I passed the spelling bee. I passed every single word, made my GPA a 58.5. I've memorized every single truck Ford's ever made with my own two hands. See, the only reason that alien didn't fuck with me because I drive a Ford. If you drive a Chevy, he's going to stick your finger up your ass. From the oldest UFO photograph ever taken, to some of the world's most authentic UFO pictures you'll ever see, we count 10 UFO sightings before there was a program called Photoshop. Number 10. 1870, Mount Washington, New Hampshire. This photo is dubbed the oldest UFO photograph ever taken. 
This photo depicts a cloud formation over the summit of Mount Washington in the winter of 1870 that happens to contain an unexplained cigar-shaped object. Was this the first cigar-shaped UFO picture ever taken? Number 9. August 3, 1965, Santa Ana, California. Rex Heflin photographs these amazing images. Rex Heflin, an Orange County Highway Inspector, was at work in a county vehicle at 12.37 p.m. when he saw a hat-shaped disc with a dome object hovering above the road. He grabbed his Polaroid camera and took three photographs of the metallic appearing object. He also took a fourth photo of a black smoke ring the object left behind. Number 8. January 1st, 1939, Oregon Cave, West Virginia. This photo was discovered in a family album by a man named Chris Miller. The photo depicts the man's grandfather and his brother in something in the distant background. This old photo was found among a thousand photos that were to be scanned for a family tree. Not much else is known about the photo. Number 7. The McMinnville UFO Photographs McMinnville, Oregon, 1950 At 7.30 p.m. May 11th, Evelyn Trent was walking back to her farmhouse after feeding rabbits on her farm. Mrs. Trent and her husband Paul lived on a farm approximately 9 miles away from McMinnville. Before reaching the house, she claimed to see a slow-moving metallic disc-shaped object headed in her direction from the northeast. She yelled for her husband who was inside the house. Upon leaving the house, he claimed he saw the object. After a short time, he went back inside their home to obtain a camera. He managed to take two photos of the object before it sped away to the west. Number 6 Southern California, December 1957 a naval officer named S.S. Ramsey saw this UFO flying across the sky. He managed to take this picture before it disappeared. Found to be authentic, his photo was first published in the Flying Saucer Review. Number 5 July 7th, 1947 William Rhodes of Phoenix, Arizona allegedly saw a disc circling his locality during sunset and took two photographs. The resulting pictures show a disc-like object with a round front and square tail in plain form. These photographs have been examined by experts who state they are true photographic images and do not appear to be an imperfection in the emulsion or in the lens. Number 4. Canada, 1956. A Royal Canadian Air Force pilot saw and photographed a very bright disc-like object that was remaining stationary near a thunderhead. While flying at an altitude of about 36,000 feet, he said this object resembled a shiny silver dollar sitting horizontal. The photo was later released to the media. Number 3 1942, Los Angeles, California only a few months after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, an unidentified object was seen hovering over the California coast. The military poised to defend the coast from a foreign invasion took aim and fired. The army fired at this UFO for about an hour and could not bring the object down. This event has been called the Battle of LA. This is one of the most famous UFO photos ever taken. Number 2 Denmark, November 17, 1975 businessman Mr. TM was walking his dog along the eastern side of a lake in Viborg. He looked up and saw a strange object shrouded in white cloud. He estimated the UFO to be 500 to 1000 meters away in silence. He took a photo with his 35 millimeter camera which he kept for taking photos of birds near the lake. The incident was investigated by Danish police officer KK who sent the negative to the Central Bureau for Color Photography, a branch of police in Copenhagen. This case is included in the declassified UFO files of the Danish Air Force published in January 2009. This case is also known as the Jellyfish UFO. Number one. October 16, 1957, Holloman Air Force Base, New Mexico. This photo was taken by Ella Louise Fortune. She took this picture while driving Highway 54 at about 1.30 p.m. She stated that the UFO was motionless over Holloman Air Force Base. And that's a wrap on that countdown list. See you next time. All those pictures were uh, UFOs before Photoshop. And the Rex Heflin and uh, one of the other ones there, even Stanton Friedman, agreed that he believes they're real and it was also Ryan Upchurch I'm gonna share that video over and over because that is funny shit um, so what if it turned out that the vampire legend was true but there's a twist what if Vlad the Impaler was actually an alien I've heard stranger things
that doesn't mean that they're telling the truth 